The two levels hypothesis explains how the brain organizes its activity so that it becomes mental activity. A hypothesis has profound implications for our understanding of mental illness. This video is an overview of these implications. Good mental health requires optimal number and duration. Number refers to the number of highly active columns in the cerebral cortex. And duration is the duration of the high activity in a column. Some values for number and duration lead to mental illness. Number disorders are disorders in the schizophrenic spectrum. Duration disorders include manic and depressive disorders. Too long duration leads to depression with reduced psychomotor speed. Too short duration causes manic episodes. Information on optimal number and duration comes from a study with 200 healthy participants. In the figure, there is one data point per participant. All data points are between 400 and 500 milliseconds. But that is not the optimal range for the duration of the high activity. To find the best ranges for number and duration, we must go back and analyze the alpha waves in detail. This figure shows the relationship between temperament and personality dimensions. Four groups of alpha waves correspond to four types of temperament. People in the centers of the alpha groups have traits typical of classical temperaments. But in the surrounding areas, the personality traits are quite different. Curved lines describe the link between personality dimensions, such as extraversion, and the alpha waves. Having waves in the centers leads to a high degree of extraversion. On the other hand, having waves in the surrounding areas results in a much lower degree of extraversion. There are differences in the degree of extraversion among the centers, but they are small. The big difference is between the surrounding areas and the centers. This figure is the most important one in this video. It shows personality traits in three subdomains. Anxiety and depression are two of the subdomains. They belong to a personality dimension called neuroticism. The third subdomain is cheerfulness, which is part of extraversion. The curved lines are the outcome of polynomial regression of data from 200 participants. In this context, an optimal area is an area with low levels of anxiety and depression. There are three such areas. In these areas, the level of cheerfulness is high. The optimal areas are related to happiness. The arrows indicate where you can find the classical temperaments. In the number duration chart, you will find the area with 8 waves per second here. The number of highly active columns alternates between 3 and 4. In the middle, the number is 4 to 5. The third area, with 12 waves per second, has a number that alternates between 5 and 6. Outside the optimal areas, we may find anxiety syndromes and depression. On both sides of an optimal area, the anxiety level is high. The duration of the high activity in the columns is too short or too long. Depression can also occur on both sides of an optimal area. The duration is too long or too short. 
A short duration means a rapid turnover of highly active columns, resulting in a high psychomotor speed. When the duration is long, turnover is slow. Advanced cognitive processes require a relatively high number. But the number can be too high and lead to overly complicated or incoherent thoughts. The middle area is larger than the other areas. And the location is different for different numbers. The line indicates that the higher the number, the longer the duration. Here the number is too high, for a short duration. But you could just as well say, the duration is too short for this number. When it comes to treatment, what is best? A medication that reduces the number, or one that prolongs the duration? Somewhat outside the optimal areas, minor mental problems may arise. The further out, the worse the symptoms. At some distance outside of the optimal areas, it is reasonable to expect mental disorders. A small change in duration can sometimes make a big difference. There is a dramatic difference in the level of anxiety between this position and the position up here. Comorbidity or overlapping diagnoses are common. Anxiety syndromes and depression often overlap. Here is one example. Both hypomania and borderline personality disorder may have a duration that is a bit too short. Another example of overlapping is depression and obsessive-compulsive disorder. Long duration gives us reliable associations when we are thinking. But if the duration is too long, the variation in thought processes becomes too small. The result can be rumination, as in major depression. Or it can be repetitive thoughts, as in obsessive-compulsive disorders. On the other side of the optimal areas, it is the opposite. Short duration leads to impulsive thinking and behavior. There is a spectrum of different durations, ranging from the impulsive to the compulsive. In early childhood, the number of highly active columns is surprisingly small. Babies often have four waves per second. Such long waves occur when the number alternates between one and two. When the number is small, the duration of high activity is usually short. Both the number and the duration must increase, but not too early and not too late. There are various stages of development during the years of childhood. Increases in number and duration can explain some of the stages. For example, Cognitive processes should be sufficiently mature before we start school. That means, the number should be high enough, but not too high. And the duration should be long enough, but not too long. If something goes wrong with the size or timing of the increase, it creates mental health problems in children. To summarize the video, some people live their lives with number and duration within an optimal area, while others are less fortunate. Minor mental problems may arise when the number or duration is somewhat outside the optimal areas. Further out we can expect to see an increase in the risk of mental illness.